I've been packing boxes for the past few days, moving out of my parents' place and into my own. Admittedly, there wasn't a ton to do. I'm trying to furnish a whole apartment with a bedroom's worth of stuff. It's strange how it can seem like you own so many things until you move to a larger space. Suddenly, all of the things that spent years next to each other have a whole new open area to be spread across. There was one box that was nearly forgotten, because it wasn't a newly packed box. It was a box packed by my parents years ago. The one almost everyone has, and has to make a decision at some point about whether to keep it. The box of your childhood things. If my dad hadn't remembered, it would have sat up in the attic for another few years. I wonder what we would have thought as kids, peering into the future, knowing that all of our favourite things end up collecting dust, and only ever thought about when you move house. It's a curious thought. I took the box to my new apartment, and began sorting through it. I decided to get it out of the way first, as it was the only box where I wasn't sure of the contents. I didn't know how much I'd be keeping, throwing away or donating, Putting everything into free piles was difficult, and emotional. But I was able to make a decision for the most part. To say it opened a gateway back into my childhood would be wrong, as it didn't. A gateway would imply I could walk through it and live it again. What it provided was a window. One which I could only look through and never open. But what a beautiful crystal clear window it provided. Sorting through that box was one of the happiest moments of the past few years. Until I got to the end. Perhaps the reason I'm focusing so much on happiness is that I'm afraid to continue the story. The final item in the box was a diary. My diary. It was pink and shiny. Cliché, but all the TV shows had that sort of thing in, so that's what I wanted as a kid. I never stuck to many things in my childhood, and this was no different. I used it for about half a year, and even then I missed about half the days. So, even after six months, it would only have about a hundred entries. I sat there and read every single one. Each dated about ten years ago and each one making me happier. But the smile dropped from my face when the dates crossed a threshold of impossibility. Two years ago. Dear Diary, I totally forgot about this. My dad got a new job recently and had to store some of his old work stuff in the attic. I helped and found this whilst up there. Reading through the old entries was enchanting, to say the least. Maybe I'll come back sometimes and write more, winky face. Alicia. My handwriting? My name? But I hadn't been up here two years ago. My dad didn't get a new job two years ago. This didn't make sense. I wasn't exactly scared at this point. I just didn't know what to think. I was just confused, and so I read on. One year ago. Dear Diary, This again. But although I don't remember writing that last year, how strange. It was still cool to read through all of this, though. I've just moved out and found this in a box of old stuff. Good job my dad reminded me about it. I'm hoping that living alone isn't as scary as it seems. I suppose only time will tell. Future me, you got this. Alicia. How could this be dated a year ago? This all happened, but it happened the same day I had read it. And I certainly never wrote it. Six months ago. I'm not doing this diary shit. What the fuck is this? I've never had a diary in my entire life. How does this thing know everything that has happened to me as a kid? 
At this point, I started to freak out. This entry wasn't like the others. It wasn't just confusing for me, but clearly whoever wrote it was also confused and concerned. Except, they still seem to think they're me. The next one changed that. Four months ago. How odd. This entire journal perfectly describes my life. Up until a couple of years ago. I'm moving out in a few months. I haven't already moved out. But all of the entries as a child perfectly mimic my life. Except for one crucial detail. My name is Rebecca. How on earth could this be? The next one was the worst. Two months ago. Dear Diary, Someone just broke in. I'm hiding in the attic, and I found my childhood diary. I've called the police, but I'm scared. I just need to take my mind away from this. The police wanted me to stay on the phone, but I was afraid of making noise. I can hear them downstairs. I hope I get to read this again soon. Writing this makes me feel like I'm going to be okay. It turns this into a memory, and not a final day. I wish I had time to read the past entries, but I don't. I promise I will soon. I just hope that I manage to. The entry ended there. It's covered in dry blood. At this point, I was physically shaking. But, I felt like I had the duty to continue this. And so I did. I took out a pen and wrote. Dear Diary, I don't know what this thing is. Will I remember writing this? What kind of power this book has is beyond me. But whatever is going on, I don't like it. I died? I moved out a year ago? My dad got a new job two years ago? My name is Rebecca? None of it makes any sense. My pen ran out of ink. So I went to look for another one. I intended to finish the entry. But when I returned... The journal was gone. I wonder where it went. Hello, sinister listeners. If you've enjoyed this story, then you'll find all the author's information in the description below. For more content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to succumb to the sinister.